Welcome on in. Welcome to this commentary that I have on March's upcoming astrology. We're going to be talking about the astrology in terms of current news and events. We are going to talk about love and romance and relationships. We're going to touch upon um, finances, the economy, money, career. And we're also going to talk about the world at large, what's going on politically, the world at large. So you could just listen to this if you want, but I will have a lot of visuals popping up on the screen to give context for what I'm saying. So to get the most out of it, you might want to sit down, maybe, you know, kick back with a uh, cup of coffee or hot tea or whatever makes you happy. And if you're not able to do that at this time, maybe put it on your watch later playlist so you can get everything out of it that I'm going to have here. But we're going to start with an overview before we get into, you know, what we can expect in those areas of our lives. And I will close out with a spiritual homework assignment. So hopefully we can make the most of the energies for this month. And I want to remind you also that if you didn't see my important dates, it will be at the very end of this video. So you can just click on through if you want to watch it and you didn't see it. And that's just a 20 minute video where you can sit back and look at the, the important dates chronologically. And if you want to see more videos like this, then definitely like it, share, hit the bell for notifications. I know I, I have to say it ad nauseum. Y'all already know, but got to remind people um, here in YouTube land. And please know I do appreciate all of that interaction. I definitely appreciate your comments. So let's get into it. All right, so just a general overview of this month. We are coming into the month having gone through the explosive Pluto return uh, for the United States last month in February. And um, I do got to say I apologize. I intended to do a lot more coverage of that. But to be perfectly honest with you, there were so many things going on in the news at that at the time of the the pluto return which was about the 18th through the 20 uh, through the yeah 22nd of february that i just got so sucked into it all and i will talk more about it here in this video but we are definitely you know coming into this month having gone through a lot of um, major changes which might not have seemed very obvious or apparent to you because as i said before these are like catalyst events that are building, 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 and probably two to four years from now, though you don't see it at this time, two to four years from now, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember when that happened. And you figure out that it really um, it served as a building block towards something really big, okay? And as I said before, we're getting you know a total of three hits of this um, throughout this year, and then a bit of a hit next year as well. And so major stuff that we're coming into March with, right? We had, by the way, last month we had, had that truckers convoy, uh, worldwide protests. I, some of y'all are not even aware of it or you don't think it's a big deal because you are following news sources that are keeping you in the dark about it. I'm talking tens of thousands of people, okay? Huge, huge stuff going on. Um, and out of it came these revelations about the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab and, and, and these basically these very deep pockets, uber wealthy people who have gone on record admitting that they have installed their own globalist leaders into these different sovereign nations to basically gut them out of their sovereignty um, and move forward with globalist interests, globalist takeovers of sovereign nations. And it's happening not just in Canada, where, you know, half the cabinet is basically on record, according to Klaus Schwab, owned by the World Economic Forum, okay, installed by them. But we see in the United States with Biden, um, some argue Trump as well, we've got pictures of that. Uh, we've got definitely people in Australia, New Zealand, Britain with Boris. I mean, we, we could go on and on and on how far reaching this, these installed leaders have become. So, you know, thanks to that trucker convoy, it just set off this ripple effect, which was quite revelatory, opened a lot of people's eyes to also fake news. A lot of uh, pushback, people starting to realize, wait a minute, what they're reporting to us on the news 
is so different from what's actually going on, which, you know, it was an ugly thing, but it was a beautiful thing, right? Um, and now as we're coming into March, we're dealing with Ukrainian, U Ukraine shifting the focus. Ah, uh, conveniently, we're going to talk about that a little bit as we get further into this video. Um, revelations about U.S. ties to corruption, to bio labs, to, um, again, fake news, propaganda, war propaganda. We're going to talk more about it later on in this video. Um, but again, going back to the overall energy coming into this month, um, we've got, we've had Mars and Capricorn and we will continue until, you know, the 6th of March. And that has, that has us dealing with a lot of clashing with authority figures, rules, restrictions. Um, but March brings about a shift with Mars moving into Aquarius, where I think we're going to see more of the collective getting a lot more vociferous, um, speaking out, really asserting itself in terms of individual rights, individual sovereignty, things like that. The overall themes for this month, I feel, will have to do with the higher ideals, very Piscean stuff, healing, overcoming differences and divides, seeing the bigger picture, the bigger plan, which we kind of have been dealing with with the Aquarian energy. We were easing into it, but there's more of a spiritual tone now, whereas, you know, in Pisces, whereas in, in Aquarius, during Aquarius season, it was more of a harsh truth tone, you know, like, I don't really care about your feelings. These are the facts, you know. Well, it gets a lot more um, spiritual with Pisces. And there's, I think, a lot more selflessness and compassion as well. Um, definitely, you know, Aquarius has that other focused vibe. But with with the Pisces energy, I think there's more of a inclination to self-sacrifice, which I'll talk more about that. I, the pain points here are unhealthy idealism. And I think if we're not engaged in that, we're having to address how we have been engaged in that in the past, because I think there's issues of disillusionment, okay? Reality checks that Aquarius season brought in of, you know, us having to really look at how our reality is, is coming up against, you know, our ideals. And, you know, maybe looking at sober subjects such as conscious charity like what am i going to give myself from a place of consciousness um right like maybe minding other people's business is actually hurting my own business right and that's self-sabotage when we do that i think that uh, the big events astrologically for this month will have to do with the full moon in Virgo around the 18th. There might be uh, some release of data having to do with health issues, COVID. I mean, it's already happening, all right? And and I also think that around that time, we're probably looking at more uh, markets, financial markets, especially crypto taking hits uh, around the 18th. But I think that's probably the, the touchiest point of the month. And I think that as we get closer to the end of the month, there's going to be increased military talking or action as we head into airy season. All right, what to expect with love and relationships, romance and relationships. I want to say that overall, and it could just simply be the relationship that you have with yourself, by the way. Overall, this is going to be a good month for, you know, traveling if you would like to, you know, have even just a little... A getaway for the day. Uh, this is going to be a good time to do that because we don't we don't have retrogrades uh, this month, um, and that's going to be super positive. Um, also, a really good month because of all the Piscean energy, you know, to heal relationships, deep in love, and the expression of love. Really positive energy for that. Generally, I think relationships. You know, generally speaking, with any kind of relationships with people. I feel that we are, and myself included, having to become more aware of how other people are living in an alternate reality. And it's, it's at times, it's a bit shocking for me because I, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be like, where have you been? We are in the information age. It is 2022. How do you still believe this stuff? How do you not know this stuff? Do you have your head stuck in the sand? I, I'm sorry, you know, like, please forgive me. This is my Aquarius talking Aquarius Sun, Aquarius Mercury, Aquarius Midheaven, like, <laughs> 
And so, you know, nice Pisces energy, and I do have a Pisces stellium as well. Uh, nice Pisces energy is like, okay, just like, let's be compassionate with these people, okay? Because, and, and then having to take a step back, because I think that we're trying to connect with people who see things differently, think differently, and, you know, there can be like definitely an Aquarius season, like, no, this is the way it is. But now we get into Pisces season and it's like, okay, how can we be patient here? How can we be understanding? It is what it is. You know, we can judge all we want during Aquarius season. Like, where have you been? Ah, oh, I want to shake you, you know, like, <laughs> okay. But Pisces season is like, all right, okay. It, it, they're, they're where they're at because they're where they're at for whatever reason. All right. How do we bridge this divide? How do we deal with the, the, the ugly facts of, you know, we're in an information war? And yes, there have been some very sad casualties, oof, the last two years, right? That we have been basically, whether people realize it or not, we have been, uh, the entire public has been under a military grade PSYOP, psychological operation. And if you want to call me a tinfoil hat wearer, conspiracy realist, go right ahead. Because the conspiracy theorists are getting proven right every day. Every day stuff's coming out to prove us right. So um, proudly accept that badge. But um, yeah, a lot of people have been duped. And um, there's an awakening happening right now, right? I, I like to say awake, not woke. And so a lot of people are awakening, that's the positive, and, and we encourage that by continuing to speak the truth, regardless of all the name calling that you're a conspiracy theorist, you're a racist, you're a Nazi, you're a uh, fill in the blank. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the gaslighting, the name calling, and all of that. You're crazy, you're stupid, you're da -da 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 -da, whatever, okay? We're familiar with it now. And so the, the sad part is that yes, people are still asleep, um, and maybe willfully so, because there's a lot of naivete. And that's something that, again, very, you know, Pisces is having to, right, you, how do you get deceived? Because you wanted to be deceived. You want to believe the best in these people. Ah, but guess what? There's shadow energies that work within people. And, um, you know, even though you want to believe the best in people and you want to give blind trust to the authorities, you know, and it's, it's easy just to be passive and, you know, Piscean passive, right? And just defer personal responsibility and decision making over to the authorities, um, who, by the way, are unaccountable, um, many of them un unelectable, you know, because they're working for agencies, um, they're officials who work for agencies. Um, that are running completely unchecked, right? Fauci, for example. Um, we see these people, you know, get caught lying to Congress and there's just no consequences, okay? Yet you you have this continued naivete. Well, um, you know, maybe there was a misunderstanding or, you know, maybe, maybe it was for a good reason. Uh, maybe there's a shadow side to humans and human behavior, um, but there's an unwillingness to acknowledge that within certain people um, and an unwillingness to acknowledge that absolute power corrupts absolutely. Why? Because if I have to like, it, you know, acknowledge that, then my false paradigm gets shattered. My sense of security gets shattered and wait, I've got to fund my own inner security and not put it on these other people. I want to say, you know, given all this energy, uh, whether we're talking about a relationship with, with yourself or with others, just be careful about giving yourself to someone who's just merely going to exploit you. Um, avoid overgiving. This is very Piscean type stuff or misappropriating your time, your attention, your affections, your resources to someone or something who will merely drain you and take advantage of you. This is a dark shadow side of Piscean energy. And the positive is learning to be more self-loving rather than pouring that out to people, right? Because we still, this is, sounds very Aquarian when I'm saying, but we still got Saturn and Aquarius, okay? We still have uh, Mars and Aquarius the first six days of this month. You know, we still have some basically Aquarian energy along with this Pisces energy where 
um, we've got to learn to stop pulling, pushing all of this, externalizing all of this, right? And learn how to, how do you put that love back into yourself? How do you recognize your own need for love and your own and your exchanges, okay? But also being realistic. Can I try, am I putting my trust in somebody or something that can be trusted? Or am I just blindly trusting because it's just easier? I mean, I don't want to have to think about it. It just feels good in the moment. I, I like to believe the best. I want to believe, you know, I don't want to have to research and, you know, fortify myself and all of that. I just kind of want to Piscean out and let it go. Well, I don't know. That might be something that needs to be worked through this month. And also working on that self-healing, uh, shadow work, spiritual work, maybe a time of solitude being used constructively towards those ends where you're calming that storm within, right? Rather than looking at external relationships, whether it be personal or relation, your relationship with the authorities, okay? You calming that storm from within rather than looking to those people externally to do that for you. Maybe even getting closure on some things, releasing, letting go, of, you know what, I, I don't really know what's going on here. I don't really have all the answers, but I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay with this, right? By the way, I just put out a special offer for those of you who are wanting to engage in more like uh, personal healing, shadow work for this month, perfect time to do it. And I am running a limited time offer on deep discount on my life mastery readings. It's three of them where you can do... Um, a my healing reading, you could do an ideal life partner reading, you can do a, a life purpose destiny reading. And if you want to know more about that, I'll have the information at the very end. So you can click on and watch that video. That's just for those of you who are interested, but it is a very, it's a deep discount for a very limited time. But moving on back to, you know, how these March energies might be affecting relationships this month, I think it's going to cause more people to want to make more heart-based decisions with higher ideals. At least they're going to have their mind on that. But again, you know, quite the challenge because we've got to be grounded in this uh, and not Neptune out, lose ourselves in it, right? The reality is that we have these ideals, but how do we make them a reality in a world where so many people soberly so many people are not living from the heart. They're not making heart-based decisions. They're not pursuing the higher ideals. A lot of people are content with mediocrity. By the way, I just put out um, a two-part series on this very issue of, you know, are we living in a love-phobic world? How do we deal with pursuing these higher ideals, very Piscean, very like uh, spiritual love? eternal love, right? How do we do this in a culture that is love adverse, commitment phobic, all right? And finally, I want to say that with that full moon in Virgo on the 18th, um, this is going to be a really good time to work on health routines. Um, I've already got my mind set on it. I mean, I, I'm, we're not, <laughs> we're not entirely into this month yet. And I have already I've already got my mind clicking on some new strategies uh, that I'm going to be implementing with my health routine, um, certain supplements and healing regimens that I'm going to be incorporating to try to get my health back on track. And I mentioned this in the important dates video of how something from the time frame of September of last year might be significant, maybe over the last six months. Um, a health matter that you've been trying to work through or iron out that might reach some finalization in terms of understanding what it is you need to do with that issue all right let's talk about career and money i think that because this is a month that is retrograde free um it's going to be a really good time for you to launch projects especially around the second with that new moon in pisces really good time also if you're seeking agreement with others uh, trying to get things signed, contracts coming into agreement, really good time for that, and also getting forward movement on projects, especially starting right off the gate, you know, the first week of this month. Really good for making decisions, plans, seizing opportunities. I will say also, it will be good for getting honest as well. 
about financial vulnerabilities and looking at how you might be able to strengthen those weaknesses. Some of you right now are doubting your purpose, okay? And if that's you, believe me, I totally understand because this matrix that we're living in right now is not rewarding people who are on point with what they're here to do in this life. It's been an uphill battle. We're dealing with censorship. We're dealing with algorithms, right? We've got truth tellers out there who are being shut down. They're here to, you know, share the truth with the collective, but you see what's happening to them. And so, you know, you get enough uh, brick walls thrown up on you or door slammed in your face. You start questioning, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And you, you need encouragement with that, you know, because the, the economy is not affirming your work financially for many of you. Um, there's also with the, you know, things with AI and the way that things are going with technology, a lot of people are having to rethink what they're doing with their God-given gifts and talents. They're like having to reinvent it. If not totally get a new career, they're having to like figure out how do I use this skill set? How do I profit from this skill set given this current economy or given the changes going on in this industry to get rid of and make obsolete my line of work? So um, yeah, how do you keep going with your calling even when you're on point with that? when it's not really paying your bills, um, by the way, that Life Purpose Destiny reading that I'm offering on discount can help with that, okay? But getting back to, you know, the, the energy for this month, some of you really need to look at um, not just how you're earning money, but yes, how you're managing those resources because not only are there there's major shifts going on with how people earn money, but major shifts on how money is managed, how resources are managed. Because overall, what we're dealing with is a devaluation of the dollar. So again, you could be totally on point doing what you're here to do and at the right place and making the right money, but where is that dollar going or whatever currency you're on? Um, there's so much devaluation, particularly with the US dollar, as seen with the inflation, I put out a video, by the way, about it. People laughed and mocked and all of that. And here we go. Here it is. <laughs> and it will continue. Okay. And so people are having to figure out um, how do I, how do I, I handle this situation? And I've talked to y'all in, you know, videos months past about hedging against inflation with Bitcoin. And by the way, we saw Bitcoin last month surged in popularity when Justin Trudeau of Canada revealed that he has the power to freeze bank accounts. And by the way, a lot of these governments do. They've got all these little emergency power that they can at any moment pull the trigger and say, aha, here's an emergency. I've got a bunch of truckers who disagree with me. We'll call them racist Nazis, insurgents. We'll call them insurrectionists, whatever name we can put on them and to call it an emergency so that I can freeze bank accounts. We saw this happen and it was quite shocking for Canadians and even Americans were like, holy crap, you can really do that? Yeah, you can. By the way, not good. Not good when uh, you see a country do that because uh, then a lot of other people who like are foreign investors decide, I don't think it's safe for us to do business over there. We might have our money seized by the government at any moment that we do something they don't agree with or they find a threat. So this witnessing that people saw of what happened with the bank accounts uh, in C Canada towards political dissidents was very eye-opening, very shocking, and even arguably, yes, there were a lot of people who were okay with it. Not They were cheering the government on doing this against their fellow citizens, not seeing how um, not only is this bad for, you know, getting foreign investor buy-in in the future, destabilizes the overall economy, but it could also be used against them in the future. People not adding, clicking, you know, connecting the dots, okay? And so this moved a lot of people to, right, there was a bank run last month. Um, by the way, it, it, you know, this is something that, that maybe with the Pluto return, um, from the 18th to the 22nd, you would think that was gonna happen in the US, but it happened in Canada. But it had a domino effect in the United States as the United States was like, wait a second. And you saw um, people starting to give money um, to Bitcoin 
right? Because I don't know if y'all kept up with that, but not only you, you saw that government not only froze those bank accounts, but prior to doing that, they were trying to seize the donations, private donations that came in from GoFundMe. And then when people took their money out of GoFundMe, they moved it over to Give, Send, Go. And then the government tried to get a hold of that. And then when they couldn't ultimately get a hold of that money, uh, there was a hacker who confessed that he worked for the government. Sketchy, really sketchy stuff. And then they basically, they basically docked all these people who donated to Give, Send, Go. So doxing is basically when they publish, publicly pu publish the names and the addresses and the personal information of people donating. So that's when people were like, we'll get on Bitcoin because it's totally anonymous and it can't be controlled. And the money, the, the government got a hard lesson on how this decentralized finance is putting power back in the hands of people so that governments cannot seize their assets and cannot have access to that kind of personal data to dox people, to intimidate them just because they have a difference of political opinion. Um, by the way, this is going to continue to happen. We already have some governments that are converting to Bitcoin as their national currency. What I'm hearing from experts is that if you want to get in on it and really make some money off of it, you need to do that before it reaches $100,000. And you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can buy it fractionally, right? Anybody can get in, but I'm just saying, like, I don't want to go off on a whole Bitcoin thing, but this might be, by the way, part of your strategy this month as you are getting real with yourself about your financial vulnerabilities. Could this happen to you? Are you in Canada or are you in a country where the government has already passed laws making it so that at any given moment they can declare a national emergency and seize your money or seize the, through hackers, seize the personal data of you donating to people? Just a thought. I am also going to say on the whole crypto thing that if you are into crypto, it's you know, common knowledge among people who are into that in astrology that usually around the time of a new moon, we're going to get a pump and that will be on the second. So um, you will see money, you know, moving pretty well, um, values going up. But as we get closer to the full moon on the 18th, we are going to get a dump where you'll see, right? And and, and that, that level of volatility is actually normal, okay? It, Bitcoin does this, but it just keeps going up. <laughs> that's the way it goes and they're like oh it took a dip and they said buy the dip buy the dip all right so yeah you might want to buy cheap around the 18th or a little thereafter and then, then the value is going to head up you know go up 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 um you know as we get closer to that next new moon when it pops overall i am seeing that with the aquarius pisces energy probably arguably not the best energy for financial markets um, generally, those signs are just, they're, they're kind of, you know, right, Aquarius is in the stratosphere, Pisces is out in the ether, so not not very earthly, like, you know, maybe during Capricorn season, yes, we saw more of that very earthy, grounded type of energy, but as we get out into the stratosphere and the ethers, that is Aquarius, Pisces, um, which we've been going through in February, March, um, not the best energy because, you know, it's not, it's just less concerned with these money matters than the other signs. And then you add to it that we've got Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces. It's it's adding more to this really lack, this lack of clarity, this lack of structure um, in terms of having a clear sense of direction or trajectory. I do feel that generally what we are going to continue to see a uh, carryover from February into March and frankly onward indefinitely is increased inflation. And this is because of the devalued dollar. And some argue that part of the reason why Bitcoin is going up is because it's a reflection of this devaluation. That as, as the value of the dollar goes down, the value of Bitcoin goes up. And frankly, a lot of people are now buying into Bitcoin to hedge against this inflation, 
to try to protect themselves in an asset that does not have, like they can't keep printing it. They can't keep devaluing it. There's a limited supply of Bitcoin. And that's another reason why people are shifting over to that because it's something that is uh, more controlled um, against and protected against this type of devaluation. Um, but again, you know, if you're looking for some big bang, um, I mean, I kind of saw that big bang go on in Canada, but it, it you know, honestly, these are all, there's reactions going on all over the world um, that is building, like I said, building blocks to catalyze a major massive economic change over the next two to four years. And we're in the midst of it right now, whether people realize it or not. I do think that people are coming to realize, you know, uh, as we are, you know, getting deeper and deeper into this Ukraine narrative um, that is out in full force in the media, people are having to realize that, you know, war is profitable for some people. We got to look at the motives here. What would motivate people to get into warfare? Again, back to let's not be pie in the sky here, Neptune out, wanting to believe the best in people. Come on, let's look at the self-sabotage. Let's look at the shadow energies. Let's look at the shadow side of humanity that maybe people want to Neptune out on, but leads them into this disillusionment. Right. And, and, and on the warfare issue, yes, um, ultimately, though some people profit from it, right, like the military industrial complex, it's, it's ultimately harmful to the population. Obviously, people who are combating on ground, yes, but even more people than that, whenever we sink further in debt as a nation and Americans, I'm speaking as one saying, listen, we've got to ask ourselves why? Why is it our responsibility to police the world and finance wars that we cannot afford? Because this is causing us to get engaged in foreign entanglements where we become beholden to interests that destroy our sovereignty and our solvency. Sovereignty being our ability to act independently as a nation for our own interests without having to do the bidding of other, say, globalist interests and their motives, which might not be the most, you know, ideal, okay? And, you know, in terms of solvency, our ability to pay back those debts, our ability to hold on to our assets, there's a real degradation that is occurring. And we are seeing this, not just with the continued inflation, devaluation of dollars, but with the constant push to get us engaged in financing wars that we cannot afford and frankly are none of our business. We have our own business to mind. We really do. And I mean that literally and metaphorically. All right, so let's talk about the world at large. I think right now, generally, a lot of people are searching for meaning in life. And yeah, you can kind of attribute that to the Piscean energy. Um, but I think also along those lines, uh, people are still unclear about who or what is involved in actualizing or manifesting a sense of meaning in their life. People right now, I think, are more, you know, on the positive, they are more inclined towards being self-sacrificing, joining causes. Like you see a lot of people right now who are wanting to publicly declare that they support Ukraine. Um, but, you know, <laughs> and, and then this could be like some of them virtue signaling, putting out, you know, the Ukrainian flags, uh, you know, emoji on their social media platforms, things like that, trying to take sides on an issue, which frankly, come on now, let's come back down to earth. <laughs> we really don't completely understand what's going on over there, okay? And so, um, you know, there could be, again, going back to the Aquarius energy bringing us into this month, there's some Aquarian energy carrying over in this month, and then you add the layers of Pisces, like, hello, let's, and I say this as somebody who's got an Aquarius stellium and a Pisces stellium, please, please, let's get grounded here. <laughs> okay, let's not lose ourselves in other people's causes because there's, there is a Neptunian fog going on. Let's not get sucked into all this, this continued virtue signaling. Like, let's stop that, okay? Um, let's stop idealizing something that we really 
we don't have all the information on, okay? And maybe later we will end up realizing um, some kind of, like I said, disillusionment about it because maybe there's an inclination with this energy for people to conflate their interests with that of others, which may actually be at odds, right? Like you think that supporting certain people is quite a virtuous thing. And on the surface, yes, I could see your point. But dig a little deeper, get clear on that Neptunian fog, and you find out, ah, oh, it's not all that it seems. There's more going on here. And actually, you aligning with those people is not really in your interest and maybe even theirs. And I'm saying this also, I'm going to say this in all humility with somebody who's got a black moon Lilith in Pisces. Holy crap. I This is where I've gotten tripped up so many times in my life where um, somebody's crying wolf, okay? And you come in to rescue and play savior and hero and the joke's on you, okay? There's some naivete that you don't understand. There's some trickery going on here, all right? Look, the truth is, please research what I'm saying if you don't believe me. The truth is, this war in Ukraine is old. This is nothing new, okay? It's been going on since about 2014. So why all of a sudden do we have an interest in this? Recently, I saw a Ukrainian MP on legacy media saying, admitting that what they're fighting for out there is the new world order. Hello? Hello? How do we make it any more clear? You're fighting for the new world order? Hello? What is this about? They put this out. And again, if you're in a Neptunian fog, oh, well, she didn't mean it like that. I think you misunderstand. I mean, why are you making this out to be such a bad thing? I mean, they probably mean the best. No, come on now. Let's sober it up. Let's sober it up. She also said that they are fighting for democratic countries. By the way, been hearing a lot of this democratic democracy, fighting for democracy, parroted ad nauseum all through legacy media. Be aware of anybody who's using the word democracy, democratic. Democracy means mob rule. This, at least in the United States, I will say where I'm from, is not supposed to be a democracy. It is supposed to be a constitutional republic, rule of law, okay? Mob rule is, you know, if four out of five people decide that it's a good idea to beat your ass to death, well, we can take a vote on that and get it passed, right? <laughs> you know? Um, constitutional republic is you have inalienable rights there are certain things that are just not up for grabs and they apply to everybody nobody gets special treatment around these inalienable rights okay these individual liberties are protected and supersede all other possible laws or mandates or whatever that get passed all right so very disturbing stuff and this MP, by the way, also said that they were to be a shield to the euro. What is the euro? It is a form of currency. Currency wars. Hello. You know, again, we've been talking about a global reset. I've talked to you all about it in previous videos. Uh, they are trying to, right, you're seeing it with the devaluation of the dollar. You're seeing it with the, the seizing of people's um, private bank accounts with their donations out in Canada. This is all going on worldwide, okay, because they're trying to bring us into a one world governance. They're trying to bring us into a one world digital currency. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen like that. They're probably going to, right, get us into, try to get us into CBDCs, central uh, banking digital currencies, um, but nevertheless, globalization. Another point I want to make about Ukraine that people need to look into is that this is known as the money laundering capital of the world. Uh, there are a lot of Americans who have some questionable dealings out there. Biden, Pelosi, Romney, Kerry, all of them have children who have worked at Ukrainian energy companies. Why? Why? making exorbitant amounts of money. Look at the Clinton Foundation. The country who has donated the most to the Clinton Foundation is Ukraine. Why, why? It's called money laundering people. Favors, kickbacks, right? In exchange for stuff like that. 
Um, but again, some of you really sweet, right? Piscean energy. Oh, they would never do that. What are you talking about? You're just thinking the worst than people. Come on now. <laughs> Let, let's get real. All right, let's get real. Let's get out of the Neptunian fog. Not everybody thinks like you. Not everybody has the same values and connections as you. Not everybody sees the world as you do. And this is being able to look beyond that at the bigger picture. Being able to see the shadow side of humanity and how we sabotage ourselves maybe um, naively, okay? By the way, Julian Assange warned that all the wars that have been fought or have been started over the last 50 years were the result of media lies. And you know what they did to him? They locked him up and they're trying to throw away the key. Who profits from all of this? Who profits? And back to my question before, why all of the sudden interest in Ukraine when this has been going on since 2014? Why does anybody suddenly care? Um, arguably, this is weapons of mass distraction. <laughs> okay, distracting from what? The treason going on in our own backyards, minding our own business, okay, right? The devaluation of our currency, the invasion of our own borders, the concealing of pedophilia rings, the cover-up of misappropriated taxpayer dollars towards bioweapons, and the resulting injuries and deaths right like right now you know that recently what came out is uh you know it was revealed that M the moderna had patented had a patent on COVID from three years ago how how use some common sense again if COVID happened over the last two years how did moderna know about it and have it patented a year prior some bells should be going off in your head and if it's not Maybe you're a little naive. I'm sorry, okay? By the way, we've got some Pfizer data that is about to be released, and this is part of data that they wanted to suppress. They put, they ask a judge to basically conceal their safety data for 75 years. Who on earth would do this? It's very questionable. But now they're having to release that. Also, you know, are you, are you hearing about the insurance companies that are now um putting out reports showing that their insurance claims are skyrocketing post the covid vaccine these are the news stories that are getting buried while you're hearing ad nauseum about ukraine here's my philosophy is don't worry about the news that they want you to know about worry about the news they don't want you to know about okay and be your own fact checker and i'm going to give you for whatever it's worth my own intuitive insight about this you know, I could be wrong, you know, and if I am, I will stand corrected. Truth always comes out, okay? But I'm going to say that intuitively, I really, I got a vision about what's going on in Ukraine. It's a creepy one. I feel that I was being shown that Ukraine is like a prostitute that keeps going back to her pimp. And I don't mean to be offensive to anybody. I'm sorry, this is just some straight queen of swords cutting right to the point. Not apologizing for it is what it is, okay? Who's the pimp? Well, it's all these globalists that are going into that country and defiling it, making it a place of ill repute, okay? Um, we can feel sorry for her, right? You feel sorry for that prostitute. They keep going back to the pimp. But if she keeps choosing to go back to the temp pimp, and I would say it's, you know, like the World Economic Forum crowd, uh, the globalists, well, I mean, what can you do? That's her choice. At the end of the day, you have to accept that that's her karmic struggle, not yours. And you might want to rescue her. You might have compassion for her. But is she ready to get out of that toxic relationship? As far as I can tell, no, not when you got Ukrainian MPs going on legacy media saying, we're fighting for the new world order. We're fighting for democracy. We are fighting for the Euro. No, they're fighting for the pimp. Okay. That's what they're telling you. And some of you are going to say, well, that's mean to say about those people. 
I feel bad for anybody who is over there because, and I even listen to some people over there say, listen, four generations, for the, you know, fourth generation Ukrainian said, listen, this is the most corrupt country. And he actually said he was grateful to Putin for rooting out the corruption that is in that country. Am I saying that I agree with or support Putin? No, I'm saying all is not what it seems. I do feel that as we get closer into Aries season, right, starting from March 20th, definitely into the first week of April, uh, people are going to get a lot more vociferous, a lot more fierce with their communications, um, possibly even a lot more aggressive, or you're going to be hearing talk, threatening talk about warfare as we are encountering, you know, Mercury and Aries on the 27th, the Sun and Aries on the 20th. There's also energies the first week of April, which I'll talk about it when we get into the, you know, April astrology. But suffice it to say, I see things really ramping up aggressively as we get closer to the end of the month. But at the same time, on the positive, I am seeing more openness People are receiving information more and they are being less arrogant about supposing that they know what's going on, right? I'm, I mean, there, there is a lot of confusion with all of this, you know, Piscean, Neptunian stuff that's going on. Uh, but the, the positive, in my opinion, is you, I'm seeing more people acknowledging it, right? Like I was listening to... Um, BCP, Black Conservative Patriot, he's got a channel here on YouTube, and basically he was saying, look, we don't know what's going on, you know, um, people know that things are strange, things are not adding up, uh, and, and frankly, we, we can't wholeheartedly trust the authorities at this point because they've been lying to us over the last two years, so we really don't entirely know what's going on, and yeah, so on one hand, you've got, you know, this confusion, but on the other hand, it's helping people to relax into more of an openness of, you know what, I don't have all the information, so I'm not going to rush in to draw conclusions about this. I'm going to continue gathering intel. But again, we get more in, as we get more into April, uh, more intel comes in and more people get more vociferous about it. Also beware of, you know, this confusion spilling over into Biden because, again, what's going on here? Is this dude really confused or is he just acting confused? Is there some dementia going on or is this an act to claim plausible deniability later on? I, I don't know. Again, let's feel this out. I think also as um, we get into airy season, there is going to be, you know, along with people getting more aggressive and more vociferous, there's going to be a heightened awareness of cyber attacks. And you know what? We've been forewarned of this. There are some astrologers that can see it in the astrology, but you know what? We've been forewarned. They've been telling us, the people at World Economic Forum, um, you know, Bill Gates, how the heck do these people know? Is they, are these people prophets? Are they psychics? No. They they know what they're doing, okay? Uh, they talk about these cyber attacks. And I'm going to say that with Saturn still in Aquarius and the Sun in Mercury and Aries, especially getting into April, um, beware of these kind of events coming up and being used, more importantly, being used to scare the public into giving up more of their rights, like we saw happen with the pandemic over the last two years. Right, giving up their rights to privacy, online information, personal data, having to do with banking, uh, moving us towards this global ID and a social credit system getting ushered in because those of y'all who are tapped in and into the know know that that's what this is all gearing us towards. That's the end game. I think that, you know, again, based on the astrology from March into April and even further out, I'm hearing a lot of people in the astrological community saying that Putin is unlikely to back down. And it's really no wonder because at the, America at this point is seen as weak, uh, right? Look at, look at the way we withdrew from Afghanistan. And then you look at all the wokeism, the clown show wokeism going on with the US military, which seems more concerned about cross-dressing, transgenderism, um, I could go on. It's humiliating. It, it it's a values 
a priority is completely right. Putin and China, love or hate them, agree with them or not about their politics, do not have time for such nonsense, okay? Um, do you think they run their militaries like this? Hells no. No, they do not. Um, and I, by the way, I talked about this um, last month when I put out um, my video on, it, it seems unrelated, but I talked about this. Uh, it, it was a video on, are we living in a love phobic world? I talked about what's happening with the feminization of men. These are our warriors. These are our defenders, our protectors in the most divine essence, pure sense. And we have castration themes going on in this country that are politically correct. And if you at all speak against this, you are like going to get taken down. All right. You're going to be accused of being hateful and non-inclusive and yada, yada, yada. But look at what's happening to us. We are being made a joke of out in the world because of this wokeism clown show that's going on. And now you've got people like our countries like Taiwan feeling quite vulnerable now to being invaded from China. Frankly, if you look at the astrology over the next 10 years, we are very much headed towards a lot of global warfare. I'm sorry to say, which I see frankly as a sign of humanity and nations struggling to maintain their sovereignty against global interests, refusing to relinquish their efforts to seize it. But that's another message for another time. In the meantime, please keep waking people up, share this video because I mean, I know the views are getting suppressed for obvious reasons, because I'm an Aquarian loud mouth and I'm just gonna say what I believe. <laughs> you know, as out there as it is, okay? As unpopular, alien as it is, I'm gonna say it. So let's move on to the spiritual homework assignment. I want to encourage you guys to do, you know, the healing shadow work this month. If you are able to, you know, get a life mastery reading, take advantage while you can, because I, I'm offering a limited time deep discount on that. Of course, if you can't afford it, I do have um, in that video uh, some resources on how you can do it yourself, because I genuinely want to help people, okay? Um, as I said before in the you know money and career portion, I really encourage people taking an honest inventory of their financial vulnerabilities right now. Try to create an action plan, like follow through on it for strengthening those weaknesses, right? Do you want to get into Bitcoin? Do you want to learn more about crypto? Do you want to stockpile? Do you need to increase your social currency by getting out there, having those face-to-face -face relationships so you're plugged into people and resources and networks locally? What about kitchen gardening where and scrap gardening where you're being a lot more frugal and resourceful with what you have and there's less waste going on? So that even if there are food shortages, which I'm sorry to say are going to continue, how are you, you know, you're going to be able to be more resilient in these realities? And finally, use this energy to clean the slate and start something new this month um, while at the same time being very realistic, very grounded as much as possible. Try to take action on these things from the 6th through the 8th when the moon is in exaltation in Taurus. Really will be a good time for you to execute those plans and seize opportunities that come up because it's very likely that you're going to have the opportunity to do that and um yeah hit the ground running hopefully in april i'm looking forward to april it does look spicy but um hopefully not too too spicy <laughs> but yeah if you want to make sure that you see my videos for april and between now and then then make sure you have hit the subscribe button that you've hit the bell to activate you know notifications so that we can stay in touch and uh hoping to connect with you again soon. Have a great month.